Welcome to the next part of the introduction section, which provides an overview of patterns and frameworks. In this part, we'll explain what patterns and frameworks are and describe why they're essential for programming mobile device software. Patterns and frameworks are important techniques, tools, and methods for leveraging proven design and implementation experience to enhance key software quality attributes, such as modularity, flexibility and extensibility, reusability, performance, and resilience. Before we discuss these topics in the context of Android, we'll first consider how experience is leveraged in other domains beyond software. Experts in most domains perform quite differently than novices. For example, professional athletes, musicians, and dancers move fluidly and effortlessly without focusing on each individual movement, as novices do. When watching experts perform, however, it's easy to forget how much effort and experience was needed to reach their high levels of achievement. Moreover, continuous repetition, practice, and mentoring from experts was crucial to their success. At the heart of all these activities is knowledge and mastery of patterns, which are reasonable solutions to common problems that arise in particular contexts. Naturally, the context in this MOOC is generally the domain of mobile software development with Android. While knowledge of patterns provides essential design and architecture guidance, it also helps to have implementation guidance which motivates the need for software frameworks. A framework is an integrated set of components that collaborate to provide a reusable architecture for a family of related applications or services. Patterns and frameworks are highly synergistic. For example, frameworks can be viewed as concrete realizations of patterns that facilitate direct reuse of detailed designs and source code. Likewise, patterns can be viewed as abstract descriptions of frameworks that facilitate reuse of software architecture and design. Patterns are generally described in programming language independent ways, whereas frameworks are generally implemented in a particular programming language. Android applies many patterns to implement its Java concurrency and communication frameworks, some of which we'll outline next. As outlined earlier, patterns leverage proven software design and programming expertise to provide reusable solutions to common problems within various contexts, such as the domains of mobile devices, aerospace, avionics, and automotive systems, e-commerce, electronic trading, and so on. Patterns allow developers in these domains to resolve key software quality attribute forces, such as the need for modularity, flexibility and extensibility, and reusability. These software quality attributes must be balanced and traded off against other forces, such as the need to reduce end-to-end -end latency or ensure resilient execution even in the face of failures or cyber attacks. Knowledge of patterns helps developers navigate more effectively through the trade-offs in these domains and design spaces. Patterns also capture recurring structures and dynamics among software elements, thereby enabling reuse of successful designs and implementation techniques. For example, Observer is a common pattern that defines a one-to-many dependency between objects, so that when one object changes, all objects that depend on it are automatically notified and updated as described at this link. This diagram depicts the canonical structure of the observer pattern, which has a subject that's associated with an abstract observer base class, which in turn is subclassed by concrete observers. These concrete observers override the update method in the abstract observer class to define application-specified behaviors. The subject maintains a collection of observers that can be attached or detached by applications. When a state change occurs, the subject is notified, which causes it to iterate through all its attached observers and invoke their update method. These callbacks should run quickly to avoid starving other observers and preventing them from doing their processing. The observer pattern can be implemented and applied in many different ways, in different languages, both object-oriented and non-object-oriented, on different platforms, with different data structures, in different domains, by different vendors, etc. Regardless of these different implementation details, the underlying pattern's roles and responsibilities are essentially the same, thereby reusing valuable design knowledge. Historically, software developers learned these types of design and programming techniques, tools, and methods by working alongside experienced developers as apprentices. Although these mentoring relationships are valuable, they're also labor-intensive and rely heavily on identifying and motivating experienced developers to serve as mentors. Likewise, they're also risky since a mentor may decide to change jobs or get hit by a bus 
as described at this link. PatternSelf addressed these risks by codifying expert knowledge of time-proven design strategies and best practices so that developers needn't learn them solely through human mentors or tedious trial and error. Android implements dozens of patterns that guide the design and implementation of its mechanisms for event demultiplexing and dispatching, interface and component partitioning and interaction, application control, resource and database management, and concurrency and synchronization. This MOOC devotes several modules to Android concurrency and communication patterns. Additional information about patterns appears at this link. Knowledge of patterns codifies experience and guides design and architecture decisions, which is essential for developing and sustaining quality software on time and on budget. But design and architecture guidance alone is insufficient for many software professionals, who also benefit from implementation guidance. To address this need, frameworks provide a powerful and complementary means to reify software experience and patterns in tangible code artifacts that help improve developer productivity and quality. A framework is an integrated set of components that collaborate to provide a reasonable architecture for a family of related applications or services. There are several defining characteristics of frameworks, as described at this link. First, they provide inversion of control, also known as the Hollywood principle. Rather than having an application be self-directed, doing what it wants, when and how it wants, a framework owns the main application event loop. Applications register event handler objects with the framework. When events occur that an application is indicated an interest in, the framework is responsible for detecting what's happened and then demultiplexing and dispatching the events to hook methods defined in the registered application event handlers. A hook method is a specified point in a framework-based program where developers can customize generic framework components with callbacks that the framework invokes to run application-specific logic. The second defining characteristic of frameworks is their support for domain-specific structures and functionality, which allows the framework to perform many common interactions, guide the canonical flow of control, and enforce key architecture constraints, so developers needn't rediscover, re-implement, and re-debug them for each new application. Some domains supported by frameworks are application domains, such as social media, mobile applications, or electronic trading. Other domains supported by frameworks are infrastructure domains, such as graphical user interfaces, communication middleware, and persistent database storage. The third defining characteristic of frameworks is their support for semi-complete applications, or portions of applications, where the framework provides most of the canonical structure and behavior in the form of reusable interfaces and classes, and developers simply implement hook methods that customize and tailor the generic framework components for application or service-specific needs. Android provides many frameworks that manage activities, event notifications, persistent content, interact with the user in the radio, and application installation. This MOOC devotes several modules to Android concurrency and communication frameworks. Additional information about frameworks appears at this link. While the overview of patterns and frameworks in the previous two videos summarized their essential characteristics, the presentation was intentionally high level and only touched briefly on their relevance to Android. To make the discussion more concrete, we'll now outline several applications of patterns and frameworks in Android based on the observer pattern outlined earlier in this video, which has been used successfully in many domains. Android applies this pattern extensively. For example, its content provider and resolver framework applies this pattern to automatically notify content observers when rows in an SQLite database change, as described this link. This diagram shows the UML notation that maps classes in a content observer-based design to key roles and responsibilities of the observer pattern. For example, the Android Desk Clock application uses the observer pattern to monitor user display preferences, such as the use of 12-hour versus 24-hour time, as shown at this path name. The Android Content Observable plays the role of the subject in the observer pattern. Likewise, the Content Observer plays the abstract observer role in the pattern, and the Format Change Observer plays the concrete observer role in the pattern. Android also uses the observer pattern in its Intense framework, 
which is a powerful mechanism that activates and notifies activity, service, and broadcast receiver components asynchronously, as described with this link. This UML diagram maps the key programming elements in the intense framework to the observer pattern, also using the desk clock application. For example, broadcast receiver is an abstract observer that's extended by the desk clock application to create an alarm receiver that connects an alarm alert intent receiver to an alarm alert activity, as shown at this path name. The Android context object plays the role of the subject, which notifies the registered alarm receiver when an alarm alert event occurs. Knowing that Android applies the observer pattern helps application developers better understand how these two different frameworks behave and how to use them effectively, since it reduces the surface area of the design space. Both these applications of the observer pattern in Android also demonstrate key framework characteristics, such as inversion of control, domain-specific structure and functionality, and semi-complete portions of applications, as discussed in the previous video. In summary, patterns and frameworks are important techniques, tools, and methods for developing and sustaining quality software. In particular, they enhance systematic software reuse by intentionally creating or acquiring reusable assets and then consistently using and evolving them to obtain a high degree of reuse, thereby optimizing the ability to produce quality software products rapidly and effectively, as described this link. If you program professionally, you may be familiar with the concept of opportunistic reuse, which involves ad hoc cutting and pasting of existing code when building a new piece of software to avoid having to write it all from scratch. While opportunistic reuse is popular, it yields many code forks that are frustratingly hard to evolve and sustain correctly and consistently over time. In contrast, systematic reuse is a more rigorous method that applies patterns and frameworks to reuse design and code artifacts. Design reuse matches problems to the relevant solution structures and dynamics in a particular domain. Code reuse reifies proven designs within particular development environments and platforms. Together, reuse of designs via patterns and code via frameworks avoids rediscovering and rewriting solutions to many software development problems, which saves time and money, as well as produces better quality products over the software lifecycle. We could devote an entire MOOC to discuss all the nuances and aspects of patterns and frameworks, since they're very powerful and deep technical topics. However, this MOOC focuses on Android, so we just cover the subset of pattern and framework topics that pertain to it. For broader and deeper coverage of these topics, see the 2013 POSA MOOC archives, which have many more hours of videos on pattern relationships, such as pattern compounds, pattern complements, pattern sequences, and pattern languages, much more extensive coverage of frameworks that implement pattern languages, as well as more background material on concurrency and communication at the operating system and middleware layers.